You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. of Dr. T, Ph.D., Dr. Hilaire Taverner. And I can feel the Holy Spirit now, because I believe. Welcome, everyone. I am your host, Dr. Hilaire Taverner, and you are listening to Dr. T, Ph.D. on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. The first thing I want to do is, as I always do, I want to thank Paul Koleski, who is so kind to uh, give us a part of his uh, beautiful song, I Believe. It really is one of my very favorite songs ever. And, um, you know, if you want to hear the whole thing, you can check him out at paulkoleski.com. The only reason we don't play the whole song is because there's always so much to accomplish within the hour. So I'm going to ask you all to get a pencil and write some things down, okay, because I'm, I've am i really got a full agenda tonight. I'm going to do what I consider nearly impossible. At least I'm going to attempt to do the nearly impossible. The first thing, if you would write down uh, dutchinc.com, that's all one word, lowercase, D-U-T-C-H-I-N-K.com. That's my website. If you want to know more about me, uh, you can certainly go there, and you'll have reasons to know a little bit later in the talk why I'm telling you this. Also, internationalwritersassociation.com. All one word, lowercase, no spaces, no punctuation. Internationalwritersassociation.com. Again, I'll explain later why. The other thing I'd like you to write down is this phone number. This is an 800 number. And it is the number of the radio station in New York City. It's 866-451-1451. And I hope that you would consider calling next week. We're having a call-in show. You know, so many people have asked me, well, I really wanted to uh, say something during the show and uh, call in. And the problem with that is it's, it's, it takes too much time and it interrupts the speaker. And most all of my speakers have a full agenda, as I have one tonight. So I hope that you will tune in next week and uh, listen to our call-ins. You can, you're pretty much uncensored. I hope you will be merciful. Um, I'd like it if you could be amusing. I'd like to be entertained as well. So 866-451-1451. If you go to um, boldbravemedia.com, they always have it posted right there. And um, so uh, what's going on tonight? Okay. I'm going to give you a life story. One of my favorite humanoids, one of my favorite people, I never met her. Uh, I have to laugh. I'm chuckling because I'm thinking of my sister, Kathleen. She lives in Florida. But she once said to me, you know, 
I think you just love the dead people more than you do the living. And I had to be, at first I thought that was pretty funny, but then I thought, my goodness, I'm so crazy about the saints. And I'm, I love a lot of dead people. I never met Helen Steiner Rice. She's a world famous poet from my hometown. But I just think she's the cat's meow. And so I'm going to try in the next hour to give you her life. Now, mind you, that's 81 years. And I'm going to try to give it to you in approximately 44 minutes because we have our station breaks and we have other little things that go on. But, you know, 81 years, I'm, I'm going to go as fast as I can. So... I'm going to ask you to listen fast. I'm going to talk about uh, this woman. I'm going to talk about her early years, her middle years, and her later years. So hold on to your seat. Here is an amazing story. I have a dream and a vision in my life. And if there's somebody out there that can pray with me, because I do start with every, every program with a prayer. And my prayer this time is, Almighty God, I believe so much in your servant, Helen Steiner Rice. I believe that if the people of this country really knew who she were, was, that they would be so edified and so inspired. I'd love to see a Hollywood first-class movie on the life of this Lorraineite. Somebody, I mean, I cannot digress, Almighty God. I have to stay on task, so please. Uh, whatever your holy will is, is always the best for all of us. But I still want to ask in your holy name that in time, and I'd love to witness it, a first class movie on a first class poet from my hometown, Lorraine, Ohio. Okay, here we go. Amen. Okay. The early years. Uh, both of Helen's parents came from farms near Wooster, Ohio, actually a little place called Kettering, Ohio. Her mother, Anna Bieri's family, was from Switzerland, and her dad, John Steiner, was of German descent. When John got a job with the Baltimore and Ohio Railway, the two were married and moved to Lorraine, Ohio. Helen Elaine Steiner was born on May 19, 1900. Her only sister, Gertrude, was born on November 2nd, 1902. So you can tell that the two daughters were two and a half years apart. Now, the Steiner family worshipped at 20th Street Methodist Church in Lorraine. This congregation has since relocated to Meister Road, and it changed its name to Christ United Methodist. Now, this same church then merged with other local Methodist churches and is now called the Lorraine Lighthouse Methodist Church. At 20th Street Methodist Church, Helen both attended and eventually taught Bible school. And as a youngster, Helen had thoughts of becoming a preacher. Helen attended Garden Avenue Elementary, which no longer exists. Then she went off to Garfield, uh, which was uh, actually reconstructed about 10 years ago in our city. And then she proceeded to Lorraine High School, from which she graduated in 1918. Now, these people were called the Lorraine High Steelmen. Uh, because Lorraine had the U.S. steel plant, a huge steel plant, one of the biggest in the country, if not the world. Anyway, uh, it's not the same high school now. Currently, the Lorraine High School are the Titans. It's a whole different ball game, and I will not digress, as interesting as that story may be. Helen published her poetry in the Lorraine High School Scimitar, that's their yearbook, in both 1916 and 1918. Her plans for after graduation were to go to Ohio Wesleyan College for a liberal arts degree and then on to Ohio State University for a degree in law. At this time, she even had thoughts of becoming a congresswoman. However, so much for thoughts and plans, because after graduation from Lorraine High School in 1918, Helen was fortunate to obtain a job at Lorraine Electric Light and Power Company. And only a few months later, 
Her father, John Steiner, died suddenly in the worldwide Spanish influenza worldwide pandemic of 1918. He was only 46 years old. Helen's father was buried in Elmwood Cemetery in Clearview, bordering the city of Lorraine. We need to take a break now. Oh, please don't leave us. There's just so much to share with you. Stay with us. This is Dr. T on PhD, talking about Helen Steiner Rice. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm, True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents, and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy, and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Dr. Hilaire Tavener. You are listening to Dr. T, Ph.D., and we are coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. As you know, I'm talking about the life of a local celebrity, somebody we love very much in our city, Helen Steiner Rice. And I told you some rather shocking news that after she graduated from high school, only a few months later, uh, her dad died and um, in the Spanish influenza worldwide pandemic of 1918. You probably know between, they guesstimate, between 40 and 60 million people died in that pandemic, which is something that could actually happen again. Anyway, Mr. Steiner was only 46 years old, and he was buried locally in the cemetery not far from where I live. Well, Helen's dreams for college were now financially impossible, and she continued her job to help earn income for her mother, who was an excellent seamstress, and her sister Gertrude, who was still at Lorraine High School. While at the power company, Helen learned to decorate lampshades. She got this job at the Lorraine Electric Light and Power Company. Um, and then she taught uh, women how to make lampshades. Can you imagine back in the day they did that sort of thing? And she also became their advertising manager, uh, which promoted the power company uh, with both her poems and her knack for window decorating. And this is really when she began her public Public speaking career. Now, in 1924, the city of Lorraine was devastated by a tornado. Actually, it was the deadliest in the state of Ohio. Um, in 1924, 80 Lorrainites died. It, uh, it, I'd, I'd love to tell you all about the tornado. Actually, when we talked about the history of Lorraine, um, we could have talked more about it then if you listened to that show. Um, but anyway, Helen. Uh, 
was actually nicknamed the Lorraine Tornado, but not because of her destructive nature, but because of her enthusiasm and her optimism as a public speaker. Helen was uh, becoming an extremely successful businesswoman and a feminist. During her presentations, she especially promoted what she considered the important women role women play in business. Helen saw women as partners in the workplace and not as mere decorations. So anyway, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a direct quote from Helen regarding women in the workplace. I ask you to listen carefully and you will get some insights, I'm sure. This is Helen speaking now, not Dr. Mary Hilaire Tavener, okay? In my many years of work among women, I have observed that every woman who rose to any great success attained her goal through her ability to get along with other women. When you hear a woman say that she wouldn't work for another woman for a million dollars, you are listening to the most efficient little grave digger in the world. She's not only digging her own grave, but she's burying all the rest of us with her. If a woman has the brains to work herself into an executive position, boost for her, cooperate with her, help her, climb still higher. For every time she goes up a step, she leaves a vacancy to be filled by you, if you've shown yourself worthy. The women who go up are those who are sincerely interested in work and who work with their own sex. Unless women go up as a sex, you will not go up. At least you will not go up to stay. As long as some women are underpaid and unrecognized, you will be underpaid and unrecognized also. The line is not drawn between trades and business. It is drawn distinctly and firmly between men and women. Pretty powerful stuff. Anyway, that's Helen. Okay, here I'm back. In June of 1921, at 28, Helen was asked to speak at a banker's convention in Dayton, Ohio. She agreed to a fee of $150 plus expenses. In light of inflation, that would probably be several thousand dollar payment for her speech in today's economy. Now, the vice president of Dayton Savings and Loan was Mr. Franklin Rice, and he was assigned to escort Helen. After the presentation, the two had dinner together, and Franklin offered to send Helen any newspaper clippings there might be in the local paper about her talk at the banker convention. Helen informed Franklin that stories reporting her, reporting on her speeches, were usually on the front page. Several days later, Franklin used a chauffeur-driven limousine to deliver the newspaper story about Helen's talk. Now, mind you, this is about, a, uh, I think, a four-hour drive. Anyway, he came up in this limousine, chauffeur-driven limousine, and brought the newspaper story, which had been prominently printed on the front page. Oh, wow. Three months after their first meeting, Franklin chartered a yacht for a Lake Erie cruise. We live on the shore of Lake Erie here in Lorraine. Two months after that, they were engaged. And the following January, they were married by the pastor of New York City's historic Marble Collegiate Church. You may recognize the name of this church because Norman Vincent Peale spent many years as pastor in this very famous church. And many celebrities have been married there. So if you're doing the math, you figured out that Helen and Franklin knew each other for six months before they're married. There was an elegant private party that evening before, paid before, by Franklin's brother Elwood. Elwood uh, Rice was extremely wealthy. Anyway, on their wedding day, which was January 30th, 1929, that would be yesterday, would be uh, 90 years ago, 90 years ago when she married um, Franklin Rice. Anyway, that day after the wedding, they boarded the SS Columbus for a honeymoon cruise to the Caribbean. It was a wonderful journey, but it was the first time Helen was to see third world poverty. The squalor of Trinidad, Havana, and Panama affected Helen's sensitive nature. 
After the honeymoon, the happy couple moved into a 14-room house in Dayton, Ohio, complete with three expensive cars. Everything in life looked hopeful and promising. So when we come back, it is time to take a break. We're going to enter into her middle years, which are the 30s and 40s and 50s of her life. Um, Well, we just knocked off 30 years. Anyway, please don't leave us. Come back. There's so much more to learn. I'm Dr. T, and you are listening to Dr. T, Ph.D., coming to you live on BBM Global Network. Stay tuned. There's more. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru. Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomenon while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate state professionals and laymen alike and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com isn't it time to sell your property today learn the my short sale guru way for over 50 years evelyn stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of pennsylvania President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Welcome back, everyone. We're so glad that you're staying with us. Um, I'm Dr. Hilaire Tavener. As you know, you're listening to Dr. T, Ph.D., and you're learning about the life of a wonderful poet and a very exceptional soul. Um, We're now moving into her middle years, which would be her 30s, 40s, and 50s. Okay, so here we go. Fasten your seatbelt. We just got through 30 years, and now we got to get through another 30, okay? Anyway, Franklin, her husband, invested most of their wealth in the stock market. But when it began to fluctuate, Helen wanted Franklin to stop buying securities. Franklin thought it was only a temporary aberration and continued to invest their monies, thinking it's an opportunity to acquire even more money. Well, as you know, in October of 1929, the stock market crashed, bringing on the greatest depression this country has ever known. One out of four workers lost their jobs, and within only a few months, all of their money was gone. Instead of wealth, they now had countless bills. Franklin even lost his job at the Dayton Bank. Franklin's brother, Elwood, wanted the couple to continue their previous comfortable lifestyles and convinced them to allow Elwood to pay the $100 a month house mortgage for their large home on Grand Avenue in Dayton, Ohio. Helen supplemented Elwood's help by going back to public speaking and additionally earned money teaching people how to play the card game of bridge. Several years later, Helen had established ties with J.R. Gibson of the Gibson Art Company in Cincinnati. So by December of 1931, Helen had accepted a full-time position as troubleshooter for their company. Uh, Franklin refused to sell their home in Dayton, so Helen agreed to live in Cincinnati, renting a room in the Gibson Hotel, and the two would visit every single weekend. Franklin was overwhelmed that he could not support their household, and he had to depend on Helen's income at Gibson. He became depressed and melancholy, 
in Helen's only published autobiography called In the Vineyard of the Lord, there is a collection of interviews with Fred Bauer, who was at the time editor of Guidepost magazine. Helen had told Fred, then one day I came home from playing bridge with some of the ladies at the club and learned the horrible news. Franklin had gone to the garage, closed the door, started one of the cars and died of carbon monoxide poisoning. I really need to also mention that Franklin's obituary stated that Helen was actually in Cincinnati when he took his life at their Dayton home. Helen had written and called, and because she did not receive a response, her inquiries led to the discovery of his suicide. And these are two very different versions, but both are available uh, when you research. I would tend to uh, believe um, Helen's testimony over the obituary. Uh, But anyway, just to let you know, okay? And anyway, Franklin's suicide letter asked Helen to repay the money her mother had loaned them and to help support his mother during the remainder of her life. He did not want to be pitied. His letter read in part, I have told you that I was not going to go down and down and down and become a common bum, and I won't either. When my money goes, which it has, I too must fade out of the picture, as I must go down with the colors at the top of the mast and the band playing. No one up until now has known the terrible conditions under which I have been trying to get along, trading this for that and switching this into that just to get money, just to live from day to day. The most enjoyable time of my life has been the weekends that I had to look forward to with you. And oh, how I did enjoy them. Darling, I love you more than anything and hope this one last error I am committing will be forgiven. Franklin was buried in Zion Memorial Church Cemetery in Moraine, Ohio, a little place located just outside of Dayton. It is interesting that Moraine should rhyme with Lorraine, where Helen chose to be buried. They are both buried near their respective parents. After his burial, Helen then proceeded to work hard, paying off their many debts. She worked diligently at the Gibson Art Company, where they published millions of greeting cards. And when their editor suddenly died, Helen was given the position of editor at verse and became one of the very first poets in the business of greeting cards to place her signature at the end of her rhymes. Helen had wonderful and lasting friendships at Gibson, and she loved her work. This is when she developed strong ties to Willis D. Gratison, a very successful Cincinnati politician, and with Sam Heed, a Gibson employee. In 1938, Helen joined Sam Heed and his family on a cruise around the Mediterranean Sea. Helen wrote verses for the Gibson greeting cards, and they were full of humor and clever wit. During her lifetime, Helen was asked, can you guess about how many poems you may have written? She replied, well, uh, maybe several million. To date, there are more than 75 published books of poetry, but often Helen would write a personal poem for a friend's wedding, a funeral, or other significant events. I would like to share with you at this time one of her most popular poems, Friendship is a Golden Chain. Friendship is a golden chain, the links are friends so dear, and like a rare and precious jewel, it's treasured more each year. It's clasped together firmly with a love that's deep and true, and it's rich with happy memories and fond recollections, too. Time cannot destroy its beauty, for as long as memory lives, years cannot erase the pleasure that the joy of friendship gives. For friendship is a priceless gift that can't be bought or sold. But to have an understanding friend is worth far more than gold. And the golden chain of friendship is strong and blessed is a strong and blessed tie, binding kindred hearts together as the years go passing by. 
By 1940, Helen Steiner Rice was widely acknowledged as one of the leading poets in the greeting card industry. She had a vivacious personality and developed a reputation for her impeccable attire. Her matching gloves, beautiful purses, and fancy hats were becoming her trademark, or as they might say today, her brand. Anyway, in February of 1945, Helen was struck with another painful blow. Her mother died suddenly of a heart attack. Helen's devotion to her mother was always remarkable, but the loving bond she shared with Gertrude now grew even more profound with her mother's passing. The two women shared every holiday together and wrote each other daily. Helen made countless trips to Lorraine from her hotel room in Cincinnati. It's time for us to take a break, everyone, but please don't leave us. You're listening to Dr. T, Ph.D., coming to you live on BBM Global Network. Stay with us. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written, recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language, and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. Yeah, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Welcome back, everyone. So glad you're still with us. I'm your host, Dr. Hilaire Tavener, and you're listening to Dr. T, Ph.D. on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. You're listening to the life of Helen Steiner Rice, a world-famous poet from Lorain, Ohio. And now we're moving into her later years, which would be her 50s, her 60s, 70s, and 80s. Okay, here we go. I hope you're not getting whiplash from this, but it's a time constraint. Helen lived in the same hotel room on Fifth Street in downtown Cincinnati ever since she began her work at Gibson Art Company. The people employed there were like family for her. She was particularly close to her maid, the maintenance supervisor, and the elevator operator. She often gave them and other original poems that she would specifically write for them. You may possibly have or own Helen's autograph or some of her letters on some of her letters, especially if you live in the Lorraine or Cincinnati areas. I do suggest you keep them as a family heirloom or leave them to the Lorraine Public Library or the Lorraine Historical Society, or you can entrust them to me please don't throw them away. So if you want to know how to send them to me, just go to my website and uh, click uh, connect or contact me and and um, I would be glad to have them. I have a few right here in my home, but I treasure them greatly. Anyway, Helen suffered a few health problems during her 50s. She struggled with menopause and weight gain. And at the age of 60, Helen Steiner Rice watched as Aladdin Pallant read her poem, The Priceless Gift of Christmas, on the Lawrence Welk Show. This was national exposure that hugely increased her popularity. In time, other poems 
became nationally famous when they were read on the Lawrence Welk program. Poems such as The Praying Hands. Now, if we have time at the end of this broadcast, I'd love to read that poem to you, The Praying Hands. But we don't know. We'll wait and see. Okay, when uh, Lawrence Welk uh, then... Lawrence Welk called Helen in Lorraine while she was visiting her sister at Thanksgiving time, and he asked Helen to please write a tribute to JFK, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, just after his assassination. This poem was written and actually helped a nation and her citizens grieve the loss of their president. During the 1960s, Helen's popularity soared and people flocked to buy her books of poetry, to get her autograph and to meet her. Helen felt the pains of lost privacy and became increasingly exhausted as she tried to keep up with the demands of her popularity. She experienced pangs of discouragement and lost energy. At this time, Helen also began publishing her hardcover books, Just For You, was her first. Nine others would follow during her lifetime. Helen usually had her royalty checks sent to Christ Methodist, now the Lorraine Lighthouse Methodist in Lorraine, Ohio, and to Wesley Chapel, where she worshipped in Cincinnati. Helen believe it or not, was even investigated by the IRS because they could hardly believe that anyone could be so generous in their extreme offerings and donations to their churches. Anyway, in, the, in her 70s, Helen suffered from arthritis and deteriorating spinal condition. In 1971, after nearly 40 years of dedicated service, Helen officially retired as editor at Gibson. But she decided to remain affiliated as consultant and retained an office there. This allowed her to continue working with Mary Jo Ealing, her secretary, as together they attempted to answer her volumes of correspondence. Helen insisted, I go there every day, but I'm working for God now, not for Gibson. October, the month of her father's and her husband's deaths, was always especially difficult for Helen. Her memories of them would plunge her into a seasonal depression each year, and in time these melancholy periods intensified, and Helen began to mistrust her own sincerity of purpose. Another great hardship occurred when she was 75. The Gibson Hotel, her home for 40 years, was to be demolished due to its age and increased deterioration. Helen had had moved into a suite at the Cincinnati Club not far away, but the inconvenience depleted Helen both psychologically and physically. Her rib cage slipped over her right lung, cutting off her oxygen supply, resulting in heart complications. Depressed, short of breath, and limited in mobility, Helen lost 30 pounds because of that move. And some of the discs in her back deteriorated, and and then she was hospitalized, and now she needed to wear a back brace. Fred Bauer, the same man and dear friend to Helen, who had interviewed her for her autobiography in the Vineyard of the Lord, encouraged Helen to establish a foundation so that her sizable estate would be used to help the poor, the sick, and the needy. Her dear friends, Mr. and Mrs. Gratison, had previously died, but their son introduced Helen to a Cincinnati lawyer who specialized in estate planning, and this man established the Helen Steiner Rice Foundation. What is sad was that Helen died before any of her family or friends could be appointed to administering on the foundation board. There were no Lorrainites serving the foundation. Even to this day, money comes to Lorraine County because of this foundation and also down to Hamilton County, which would be Cincinnati. She's still giving money to special causes, even though she died, you know, almost, well, close to 40 years ago. Let me continue. I digress. Forgive me. In April of 1980, Helen fell and broke her left hip and wrist. She would now live in the Catholic Franciscan Terrace Nursing Home in Wyoming, And that's a northern suburb of Cincinnati, folks. Don't go too far west, okay? It's a city. Get well wishes were sent by the president, Jimmy and Mrs. Carter, who at that time were in the White House. Also, Pope John Paul II and many, many others. 
Helen had never earned a college degree because she had given up her dreams of college to earn income for her family. But on March 14, 1981, in a private ceremony at the Catholic Franciscan Terrace Nursing Home, the president of Mount St. Joseph College presented Helen with an honorary doctorate of humane letters. The following month, on the evening of April 23rd, 1981, at the age of 80, only one month short of Helen becoming 81 years old, Helen died. Her body was brought back to Lorraine, and she was buried next to her parents. Twelve years later, her sister Gertrude Steiner would be buried in the family plot. Helen died almost 38 years ago. In 19... It's, uh, guess what? It's time to take a break again. So let's get a breather. So don't go away. Just, uh, I, as you know, I'm Hilaire Tavener, Dr. T, a PhD, and we're uh, sharing the story of uh, Helen Steiner Rice coming to you live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Join us. There's still more to share. And thank you so much for listening. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet, and they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Have you ever wondered why some children recover from their symptoms of autism while others never seem to get any better? After 13 years of research, Karen Thomas has recovered her own son from his symptoms of autism naturally. She now shares how she did it with you in her free webinar so that you can have the right resources and knowledge to help your child. The definition of recovery is to regain health. Karen offers this to you in four stages. Healing the gut, natural heavy metal detoxification, balancing the co-infections of autism, brain support, and repair. Register now for this free webinar to help you know what you can do to help your child to sleep better, be more calm, improve focus, and reach their fullest potential to live a happy, healthy life. Go to naturallyrecoveringautism.com forward slash free workshop empowering parents with the resources to naturally recover autism from a mom who's done it welcome back everyone so glad you're still joining us as you know i'm dr hilaire tavener and you're listening to the life of helen steiner rice a world famous poet i know when i was over in ireland and i had just mentioned somebody mentioned the name helen steiner rice and i said well do you know she's from my hometown and she goes really oh we love her poetry here well yes i had to be proud of her how could i not be Anyway, I want to say that nine, now she died, as we mentioned, 38 years ago, okay? So that's close to 40 years ago. But in 1999, I and a small group of individuals, Lambert Fitzgerald, who is Helen Steiner Rice's brother-in-law, and Dick and Betty Knitter, who is now deceased, they're both deceased, we established a group called the Friends of Helen Steiner Rice, and our purpose was for getting Helen honored in her hometown, the city she loved and the place of her birth and burial. Over the years, the membership increased, and we were able to obtain an Ohio bicentennial marker erected at the best, most premier park in our city at the west end of Lakeview Park. It's right on Lake Erie. A rose bush was also placed in Lakeview Rose Garden and was purchased by the group in memory of Helen Steiner Rice and also in memory of Dick and Betty Knitter after uh, after they had died. In uh, 2006, um, the friends of Helen Steiner Rice um, uh, decided to morph into another group. It was a group of writers and they wanted to be called the International Writers Association because we are the city of Lorraine and we are the international city. That's sort of our nickname. 
And so the International Writer Support Group was uh, founded, and uh, it morphed right from the Friends of Helen Steiner Rice. Uh, because we had worked hard and we got some accomplishments. We got that bicentennial marker. The state of Ohio turned uh, in uh, 2003, we turned 200 years old. So it's there. It's a beautiful marker. It's so impressive. Anyway, that and then also our group had gotten a school, an elementary school named for Helen Steiner Rice on Tacoma Avenue. Those were some accomplishments. We'd still like to see her in the National Women's Hall of Fame in Seneca Falls, New York. She belongs there. The competition's really, really tough, but we keep on trying. You know, they only do it every other year and get 10 people, but they have like 500 applicants. But I keep they keep on saying, don't give up, keep on trying, and that's what we do anyway. This group now, we used to be the Friends of Helen Steiner Rice. We are now called the International Writers Association slash Friends of Helen Steiner Rice. And we continue to work to get Helen, uh, as you know, honored in the National Women's Hall of Fame. So anyway, um, if you are a writer and you um, have a passion for writing, I hope you go to that website, internationalwritersassociation.com, and consider joining us. It's only $25 for an entire year, and you network with some marvelous writers, some very talented people. I know um, our treasurer, Kelly Boyer Saggart, I mean, she was uh, nominated for an Emmy Award, her play on, on Ga Grandma Gatewood. It was on PBS television all around the United States, and uh, we're so proud of her, but we really have a lot of accomplished writers. One of our writers, as you know, gave a program, and it was excellent on good literature uh, for adolescents. Um, that was Teresa Linden. Anyway, so please consider joining our group. Uh, go to the website, uh, internationalwritersassociation.com. Okay? And now I would like to... Um, read another something that Helen wrote, which I really am crazy about. It's, um, it's called Helen's Ten Commandments for Living. Okay, and this is something that she composed, and um, so I'm going to read them to you, and I'm also going to say, you know, uh, keep on in your prayers, just please keep on praying. I just believe and hope that there will be a world-class, first-class uh, movie on the life of Helen Steiner Rice. We've only touched the tip of the tip of the iceberg, but really, who can talk about 81 years in less than an hour? Uh, I'm trying to do the best I can. So please listen to Helen's. These are her Ten Commandments. I know that Moses gave us the really big ten, but please, here's Helen's, all right? Number one, thou shalt be happy. Number two, thou shalt use thy talents and make others glad. Number three, thou shalt rise above defeat and trouble. Commandment number four. Thou shalt look upon each day as a new day. Number five, thou shalt always do thy best and leave the rest to God. Number six, thou shalt not waste thy time and energy and useless worry. Number seven, thou shalt look only on the bright side of life. Number eight, thou shalt not be afraid of tomorrow. Number nine, Thou shalt have a kind word and a kind deed for everyone. And number 10, thou shalt say each morning, I am a child of God and nothing can hurt me. So I think you had uh, some insights right there into the mind of Helen Steiner Rice. Mind you, she wrote there's 72 books of her poetry that have been published. And uh, I hope that you go to the local library, uh, sign out one of them, any one of them, and just go through her. You know, I think poetry is a special kind of writing because it, I don't know, it's, it's from the soul. It's not just from the mind, but it, there's just something. And, and if you knew her soul, I, I've often called her a pen in the hand of God. And I just, that's what I think. When all of these good words that she shared, I mean, wouldn't it be nice if we could all say, you know, all day today, I only gave good words to my husband, my children, my family, my friends. 
to the stranger. If we would all speak the kindness that she did. She was an extraordinary soul. And the city of Lorraine is so proud of her. And, um, and really, I'm sincere when I ask you to please pray that there might be a movie. Um, maybe they'll call it A Pen in the Hand of God. Uh, that's a good title for, uh, for a, a movie. But as you can see, um, I gave you some of the highlights, and you can see it was not an easy life. She, her dad died when she just got out of high school. Her mother dies when she's only 45. Her husband commits suicide. She never had children. Um, but she always had this profound faith in God. And so that's why we like recognizing her and enjoying her. So let's take a break. Um, come back soon. We still have to kind of uh, wind up the program. And I'm so grateful that you've hung in this time. God bless. Come back soon. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Welcome back, everyone. So glad you're with us. As you know, I'm Dr. Hilaire Tavener, and you're listening to the life of Helen Steiner Rice, a world-famous poet from Lorraine, Ohio. What I'd like again to remind you, I gave you that phone number, 866-451-1451. I really do hope you call in next week and, you know, give us your thoughts on any of our programs. We've had uh, 12 programs so far, and as you know, our programs will end and the end of April. Um, so April 25th will be the last one. We've got still so many wonderful topics that we will be, um, you know, working with. We'll be talking about uh, teenage suicide, Alzheimer's, abortion, the, the blessing of handwritten correspondence. Um, we're going to have a priest from Ireland uh, talk about a um, a mystic over there, Christina Gallagher, who's really been doing some very uh, spiritual things that I think you will find interesting. Anyway, um, I hope you call us in. And, you know, when we talk about the Friends of Helen Steiner Rice morphing into the International Writers Association, one of the things we have done in the International Writers Association is have an annual Northeast Ohio Christian Writers Conference. We've been doing it now. This is our seventh year. And it's going to be here in Lorraine at the Presbyterian Heritage Church on Levitt Road in Amherst. It'll be April the 5th, Friday night, and we're actually 
actually going to be uh, talking about Helen Steiner Rice. We hope to have her brother-in-law with us and other people will putting in their two cents and what they want to talk. So Friday night is really to honor Helen Steiner Rice. Now on Saturday from 9.30 until 5 o'clock, we provide your breakfast and lunch and you have this whole event for only $25. So, you know, uh, if you go to the International Writers Association com you can actually sign up and pay right online you know and you can uh, and join us even if you're not a writer maybe you just want to meet some of the most creative entertaining kind spirited uh, am- amazing people we've got about 60 people in our international writers association and about 15 in other countries so i wanted to give you that commercial and i'm going to kind of close with this prayer it's a prayer that helen steiner rice wrote i'm, I'm glad i had a, a time uh, enough time to get it in okay so it's called the praying hands you might have heard it before but let's pray it as i say it please The praying hands are much, much more than just a work of art. They are the soul's creation of a deeply thankful heart. They are a priceless masterpiece that love alone could paint, and they reveal the selflessness of an unheralded saint. These hands, so scarred and toil-worn, tell the story of a man who sacrificed his talent in accordance with God's plan. For in God's plan are many things man cannot understand, but we must trust God's judgment and be guided by his hand. Sometimes he asks us to give up our dreams of happiness. Sometimes we must forego our hopes of fortune and success. Not all of us can triumph or rise to heights of fame. And many times what should be ours goes to another name. But he who makes a sacrifice so another may succeed is indeed a true disciple of our blessed Savior's creed. And when we give ourselves away in sacrifice and love, we are laying up rich treasures in God's kingdom up above. And hidden in gnarled, toiled hands is the truest art of living achieved alone by those who've learned the victory of giving for any sacrifice on earth made in dear Lord's name. Assure the giver of a place in heaven's hall of fame. And who can say with certainty where the greatest talent lies or who will be the greatest in our heavenly Father's eyes. Thank you, Helen Steiner Rice, and thank each of you. God bless us all. Amen. I can feel your presence, I can feel your loving power. In the gift of this communion, in this holy hour, Jesus, will you heal me of my iniquity? This I ask of you, cause I believe, I believe, I believe in Tune in next week for more thought-provoking conversation with Dr. Hilaire Tavener on Dr. T, Ph.D. And I can feel the Holy Spirit now because I believe. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.